The VS Code team's original vision was to build a development tool that could run fully in the browser. We're so excited to show you that we've brought that vision to life and it's available in VS Code for the web or at vscode.dev. So here I've already gone to vscode.dev and we're gonna see that even though it's in my browser, it looks like the VS Code I'm already familiar with in the desktop. Now there's a ton of different great things I can do in here. So for instance, I could go ahead and choose to open a folder to work on my local files. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this HTML project that I've been working on. Now, once I grant permission to the browser, I can view these files. I just wanna go ahead and work on some CSS and colors. I'll get a color picker, which is super convenient. So let's go ahead and say, I wanna change the header in this site to this red color. I'll be prompted to save my changes. And over here, I've already been working on the site. I'll reload and boom, we can see that the change took effect. All right, and so beyond just local files, I can also work on repositories stored elsewhere or different remote repositories. Let's say I'm working on this GitHub repo. What I can do is I can prepend vscode.dev to any GitHub URL, and we're gonna see that it loads up in my VS Code environment. So we're gonna see that the files populate in the Explorer. I have the README here. I'm gonna get the same experience of being able to open preview on the side. So as I make changes, I can preview those changes, all those kinds of awesome things. And now taking a closer look at these buttons on the left, it's gonna be the same activity bar that we're used to in desktop VS Code. So for instance, I can go ahead and search my app and I can even get multi-file search by enabling indexing. I'm gonna have access to source control. So if I wanna go ahead and say, I'm really excited about setup, add an exclamation, I can say update readme and just directly commit that change. Now, beyond just GitHub repos, we also have the power in VS Code for the web to work on Azure repos, which are stored in Azure DevOps. And again, I can just go ahead and prepend VS Code Dev to that URL. Now we're gonna see that it looks just like the GitHub editing experience. My files populate in the Explorer. I can work on them, view them. I'll get different syntax highlighting and language support in the browser, all those kinds of things. And also navigate between different repos directly in VS Code for the web. So over here in the remote indicator on the lower left, I could say open remote repository and I could choose different repos from GitHub or Azure repos directly. If I escape out of that, we can also see I have other options. So one thing to note about VS Code for the web is that since it's running entirely in the browser, there isn't any backing compute, which basically means you won't have access to certain VS Code functionality from the desktop where you do have compute. So you wouldn't be able to run your code or you wouldn't be able to have access to the terminal. So if I select continue working on from the terminal or from that remote indicator menu, I'll see different options. So for instance, for an Azure repo, I could clone it locally. If I was working on a GitHub repo, I'd also get the option to continue in a GitHub code space. We can see in the URL, we have the same pattern that we follow and it's VS Code Dev slash and then some sort of service or project. So for instance, here it's slash Azure repos. And in the GitHub example, it's slash GitHub. And now these special URLs are called routes. And now beyond just the GitHub or the Azure repos routes, we're also gonna have a variety of other routes that can give us this awesome customized VS Code dev experience. So for instance, there's this theme that I've been interested in trying out and I can go ahead and say VS Code dev slash theme is the route and then the identifier of the theme. And what we're gonna see is we have some sample files that load up and VS Code dev is gonna give us this preview of the theme in the browser. And now we have our preview and we can choose if we like it and we wanna keep using it, we can keep. If we wanna keep exploring some other themes, we don't have to keep it. Now beyond themes, there's a variety of other extensions that'll really make your web experience even more powerful. So for instance, if I open up here, we're gonna see that we have this slash code tour route and this route is going to be populated with the code tour extension, which gives us these awesome steps to navigate more easily through a repository. So you may be thinking, hey, this looks really cool. Can I just use any extension that I already use in desktop in the web? And the answer is it depends. So as an extension author, if your extension is more than just a theme or a snippet or a grammar, you'll wanna make sure that it's web enabled. And we make that super easy and straightforward through this document here. And so this will give you the entire rundown of how to make sure that your extensions are gonna work in the browser, different steps to take, and they're gonna be structured pretty much just like your regular desktop extensions, just with a few additions. So thank you so much for joining me for this quick overview of the awesome features of VS Code for the web. We'd love for you to go try it out. Just go to vscode.dev. And if you're an extension author, please go ahead and check out this web extension authoring guide. 
Thank you so much and happy coding.